All right, what's poppin', man? You already know your boy, Mr. J. Hill, was in the building. Um, oh, man. Damn, it's been a long night, man. Uh, shout out to my camera guys, though. Shout out to my guy. Shout out to my guy. My guest, Big Sexy, is in the building. Um, you know, we do this conversation all the time. I seen this guy on Instagram talking his shit, and I'm just like, this nigga is interesting on, 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 um, on multi-levels, you feel me? Uh, he's talking some really provocative shit, you feel me? But also, he's talking some real, like, inspirational shit as well, if that makes sense, right? So I'm like, let me reach out to this guy, see if he, see if he want to do it. I reached out. He was like, yo, I'm down. I want to say thank you. Mm -hmm. I appreciate you. Uh, we've been waiting for a long time. And for people that don't know, I want to get the record straight. This nigga waited maybe like an hour. This shit don't happen in our industry. It don't happen. He waited an hour. I offered to pay this nigga. I offered to get this nigga some food. He already ate. Good. Down. You feel me? So, and he stayed. So I just want to. I just want to get that record straight. Yeah. Thank you. I no appreciate problem. you. No problem. Uh, it's all love. So, I got a lot of shit to talk about. Okay. Ah, where do we Ask start? me whatever. I I'm an open book, and I can answer anything. Yo, how, how, so before we get into all the spicy shit, I guess, when did you get lit? How did you get lit? Okay, so initially, I've always been lit in my city. Everybody always know me because in my city, where I'm from, kind of similar to where you from, it's a different kind of arena than I would say like Atlanta. I'm Way from Savannah, different. Georgia. <laughs> so different. where I'm from, the gay community is very small. Mm -hmm. So to have somebody like me, big, Flamboyant, it's real different, real rare. So pull up to the club, you got on a fur coat, club full of niggas, you know what I'm saying? So I always was known. And then I also had a relationship, a friendship with Jada. Mm. Little babies, baby mother. But I don't even like to address her like that because she been lit before him. Right. But we had a friendship. Mm. So she contributed to a lot of my popularity of people knowing who I am, my followers. And then when me and her severed ties and we went separate ways, I learned how to launch my own business and market my own brand and mm. get my own followers up and put my own business out there. So it's been a long time coming, but it's been a process throughout the years so to we, get to where I'm at. We were talking about that um, earlier, right? And I wanted to like go further into that. You mm. were saying that, you know, like now, now Jada is like, she ain't the Jada. That girl. That, yeah, she ain't, she ain't the Jada that mm. you knew. Yeah. She different. Like, do you, do y'all still talk? No, we don't talk. And I see it like this. Everything happens for a reason. Mm -hmm. God allows literally every situation in life to happen for a reason. So a lot of times when he break up friendships, when he break up relationships, when he break up business establishments or, or business partners, everything is aligned for a purpose. So in the moment of when me and Jada was friends and things did go left, mm -hmm. it was a reason behind that. Mm. because I live in her shadows. A lot of things that I'm doing now, I would not have accomplished if I was still friends with her, so God allowed, allowed everything to happen for a reason. So no, we're not on talking terms, but it's no bad blood at all, okay. because she contributed to a lot of my success. So, and, and I, I definitely think that's the respectable thing to say, right? Mm -hmm. But on a, like, on some real genuine shit. Uh -huh. Honestly, like, that, does it ever, like, hurt your feelings? Like, yo, that was my friend, you feel me? Like, and now we're not even talking like that. No, it don't hurt my feelings. Damn. You know why it doesn't hurt my feelings? Because I'm not too left behind. Like, mm. true indeed, Jada's doing her thing. She is that girl. Mm. She been that girl before she even connected with him. And that's why we have to set the record straight for people when I hear a little chatters when they say, oh, he made her. No, he didn't make her. She been made. But at the same time, I got my own money, own mm. car, own house. I'm booked on my own. I have my own brand. I'm doing my own thing. A lot of the rooms that she's in, I can be in, in as well. And I have been in as well. So I don't really too much feel left behind. I don't really too much feel anything salty about this situation. I don't too much feel any bad way about it. It happened. And I take it for what it is and keep it pushing and keep it moving and get my own bag. You know what I'm saying? So that's really how I see it. It's dope that you even pay your success forward to Jada. Because I'm like, yo, how did you get that? Man, I was friends with Jada. You feel me? Like, and, but a lot of people... They want to make it seem like they don't need nobody, oh, right? This is a good. <laughs> this hey, is a good conversation. Hey, 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 can we get some? Can we get some exclusivity to this? Because damn, we got a fourth camera angle. Like, yeah, you, no, but tell them, this, turn that shit off. This, <laughs> this, we get some exclusivity. God damn it! Like, this, turn the camera off, nigga. You, nigga, I'm talking. To you. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's more than BTS, nigga. No, <laughs> oh, he, 
Nah, but he got to get a lot of this shit because I'm a, but, you gonna have all this shit. No, but listen, let me tell you. Go ahead, go ahead, cut go ahead, the go camera right quick. Nah, 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 don't cut it. Don't uh, cut it. No, you but good. listen, this you is good, how you it, good. This, this is how it go. I'm telling you. When, Say less. When you set it up like this. Say less. I'm, listen, I'm learning. You put clips out there to the people. Now it's getting very much oh. Gotta go watch that. All right, say that. Now, when you when you put your profession, because see, this is the thing how it works. You like the genuine? Huh? It's genuine. Yes. So oh, okay, keep, go ahead. No, but I do you, your thing. Do your you thing. Keep stopping. Do your thing. You do need your... to keep rolling. <laughs> you need to keep it rolling. Do your I, thing. You know, I'm saying. <laughs> do your thing. Hey, 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 all I'm saying is usually I don't be rocking, but I'm a, I'm taking notes. No, I'm taking but notes. listen, I'm telling you, I know. No. Go. No. No, no, but listen, <laughs> I'm not going to just post the whole thing like that. I, I got know exactly you. what I'm doing too. Hey. But I'm telling you this, I'm telling you this. I'm I'm, I'm taking notes, Jay, though. you got the potential to be great. This I'm is, taking, this I'm whole taking setup, notes. But a lot of times that raw content, it hits harder than the professional Say less, shit. say less. I'm taking Here. notes. I'm take, so let's go back to it. Um, got it. We were talking, uh, shit. Where was Jada. That? Jada, right? Yes. And we were saying that you pay it forward. A lot of people, a lot of times... People don't want to give that acknowledgement because they scared uh -huh. that it might take away from them. Uh huh. Uh -oh. Ooh, and that is that is so dope that you asked me that because a lot of people they say, "Why do you mention Jada name so much?" Because when people ask me how I got started, how my platform was built, how I got a lot of followers, it was be because of Jada. Mm -hmm. When I met Jada, I had maybe like thirty thousand followers. When me and her seven times from being friends, I had a hundred thousand, and a lot of it contribute to her posting me, tagging me. So I would never not say where a lot of my followers came from because it's the truth. She helps her friends get on. But when we stopped being friends, I was broke. Mm. You know what I'm saying? So the money that I have now and the bookings and the success that I have now is contributed to me and what I'm doing. A lot of times when people break ties from being friends with people, they can't level themselves up. They don't know where to go. They don't know how to do it. They don't know how to maintain the success. Where I'm at now is because of God and myself. Thanks. But when people ask me, how did you get started? Who helps you with the followers? I say Jada. And even if I hear somebody in the background say, oh, little baby made her. No, he didn't. That girl been paid way before little baby. And she contributed to a lot of my success, but the success that I have now, it's on me. I'm getting booked for Big Sexy. Mm. People, when they see me in the street and they're going crazy, it's because of me, but I would never just take, and then she's a black woman at that. So I would never just discredit her and say, oh, Jada didn't contribute to my followers. Jada didn't contribute to my success. She didn't help me build who I am today. She did, but the success I have today is because of me and my grind and my hustle. Bro, um, can we can we, can we we have a conversation? Down. Let's have a conversation. All right, Um, so. You are a gay male, uh -huh. right? And the United States and this country in America, you for me, and we know how like it can get so judgmental. But you wear it. Your name is Big Sexy. Shit, you be fucking walking around on your Instagram and your underwear and shit like that. It can get uncomfortable uh -huh. for, for a lot of straight men. <laughs> it can. It can, right? But that's why I said let's talk about it. Uh -huh. But you wear it and, and you you proud of it. Like what 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 gave you the confidence? A lot of people don't know I literally had to fight to be who I am. Because I think a lot of times I don't know why people have this embedded in, in their head that I'm like from like L.A., like the nice side of town. Mm. I don't know why people be thinking that I'm just some type of bougie ass bitch that came from like a household of money and riches. And I guess it's just because of the way I carry myself. And I know sometimes I could come off a little bit bougie, a little bit arrogant, but I am from the hood. I am from Savannah, Georgia, and if you don't know about Savannah, Georgia, you need to Google it. That is the trenches. That's the hood. So, <laughs> so I literally had to fight to be who I am. Mm. Literally, physically having to fight to be who I am. With niggas who didn't really understand, niggas who didn't want to understand, niggas who was ignorant, niggas who was confused, niggas who wanted to try it, but they was fighting against their own personal things. And in the inside, I was fighting against mm. all of that. So I literally was going up against so many demons. So now I done heard it all. I done heard faggot. I done heard fat. I done heard everything. So that shit don't faze me. Right. When I walk into a room, I'm going to be who I am and I'm going to own it. 24-7. Mm. So it's just like, when people see me now, a lot of times they think it's like a gimmick of something that I created because I got famous from it or a gimmick of something I created because I know how to get the views. No, that's who. That's really who I am 24-7. I'm serving it like that in real life. Yo, you. Um, it's crazy because even in the question, right, I had to reevaluate the question. And the fact that we're in America and what you do on your grind makes straight men uncomfortable, that, honestly, to be honest, is a problem. Uh -huh. Why do you think, do you, first of all, it's two part question. Do you think your existence and your confidence intimidate straight men and why? If you say yes, of course, because if not, then. I would say yes and no, because where I'm from, the real niggas, they respect me. Okay. 
the real, not everybody, but the vast majority of them respect me because what the fuck I have going on, it's none of your fucking business. Mm -hmm. This is not your problem. I'm not fucking you. I'm not laying with you. So what I have going on, it's not your business. Mm. Unless I come and approach you in some type of way that's inappropriate, then that's another thing. But a lot of times real niggas respect me and for the ones that don't, it could be an issue. Mm. Like I, I never have no problem stating who I am and, 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 and standing up for who I am. You know what I'm saying? So I think it's just a lot of times too, even with me in high school, the reason why I used to have to fight so much is because the other gay males, which was like maybe two in a room and in a, in a school full of thousands of children, because again, I'm from Savannah. It's very, it's not a real big LGBTQ community like it is in Atlanta, but it was given very much like, no, you can't speak to me like that, and I will beat your ass. Mm. That's what it was given. So I intimidated them a lot because they wasn't they wasn't used to that. Yo, can we like? Can, but we can't ignore it, right? Uh huh. This is a real thing. If a straight man get beat up by by a gay guy, that's that's embarrassing. That's bad. It is bad. And that's, <laughs> but a, a, a gay guy is a still a nigga. Like a, a gay guy is still a guy. Like you can say you get beat up by anybody. <laughs> but you gotta understand too. And I I heard a real ass nigga say this. When he did time, he was like they all. When he did time, he said the men will always be very skeptical about fighting a gay man yeah. because <laughs> you got to think about it. Gay men been fighting for yeah. so long. All my life, I had to. Fight. No, literally, <laughs> it's a lot of gay men out there who have literally been fighting like me for so long for respect, fighting a family, not being wanted, mama kicking them out, daddy kicking them out, having to fight their brothers who don't agree with their lifestyle, talk about their it, cousins getting jumped. So that anger and aggression be on. 2000 you got some not necessarily me because i pay a lot of things but you have some gay men out there who be on 500 mm. all day long they are literally waiting angry. sitting in a angry they are literally waiting sitting in a chair to rock you literally and the ones in atlanta they plays with know-how they play these gays in atlanta it's a different breed mm. And then not only are they going to beat your ass, it's going to be about 65 of them pulling up to beat your ass again. So if you can, right, if you can, like, take a step out of your shoes, because, uh -huh. like, you said you came from Savannah, you had a lot of respect, right? Mm. But we can't ignore that the gay generation, the LGBTQ community itself, the men, not even a woman, mm. first of all, is the difference between the men and the women, right? We can't uh -huh. ignore that. And second of all, you can't, we, can't ignore, we can't ignore this elephant in the room that, like, when a gay guy is in a room full of straight men that they feel uncomfortable. So if you could take yourself out of it because you've been respected, why do you think gay men in general intimidate straight men? And so, see, it's two sides to the coin because I'm not stupid and I'm not close-minded to the fact of as gay men, sometimes we do a lot, mm -hmm. right? I already know that. I get it. I do a lot. What's and a lot? I, what you mean? A lot. Like, we have a way, too, of sometimes making men feel uncomfortable, saying certain things, approaching them in a certain way, looking at them. And I have to explain to people all the time, every man is not gay. Mm. So it's a lot of men who are not comfortable with you literally just sitting there staring at them. They're not comfortable with that. Mm. And I get both sides of the spectrum, but then you have a lot of times, it's a lot of men who are not comfortable with themselves. So, so you're literally your existence of even being around, it bothers them because you, you have to notice too, a lot of men are fighting a lot of demons within mm -hmm. themselves. So we was raised a certain way to live a heterosexual life. That was what was preached to us. That is what we was taught to be, to it's have a heavy. family, to have a wife. But it's a lot of men, not all, because I argue with anybody about that. All men is not gay. Mm -hmm. But you have a lot of men who are very curious. Mm -hmm. They are very questionable. And they're and so, they probably scared. They're scared because it's, it's, it is different. You feel me? Anything, uh -huh. Anytime something is different, people are, they shy away from it, right? Mm -hmm. And what happened is, like, when you're embarrassed about something, like, you, you tend to, like, uh, what's the word? Like, ah, uh, you, you tend to, like, project your feelings on somebody yeah. else. You know what I'm saying? So what happens is, like, if you, not saying all men, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. But some men who are, like, homophobic uh -huh. what they, they, is it something within themselves that like they they, they projecting it on uh -huh. on an out of on an outer level uh -huh. right and it's like nah bro like it's it no person in general should make you feel uncomfortable uh -huh. in your skin uh -huh. you know what i'm saying like yeah they have 
secondhand embarrassment. That's a uh -huh. real thing, right? You uh -huh. see somebody do something like you feel embarrassed for them, but nobody should make you feel uncomfortable in your skin by what they're doing. Yes. What you eat don't make me shit. Absolutely. You feel me? So like, but but I ask that because I'm pretty sure you had to live this. Yes. You see people judge uh -huh. you all the time. All day, every day. So you have to literally like have tough skin. Mm. Because you walk into a room and they judging you. You walk into the mall and they judging you. You walk into a club, they judging you. People are always gonna talk, but you just have to know who you are as a person. Mm. And that is the type of I've literally been like that since I was a little boy. If my mother was sitting here right now, if my sister was sitting here right now, she would let you know this is who I am. It's no gimmick. This is who I am. I've always been this way. I don't give a fuck what nobody is thinking. This is who I am. You don't pay my bills. You don't fuck me. Your opinion really don't matter to me. Because mm. at the end of the day, like, I, it's even to the point, like, I would check my mother. I would check my, it, it don't matter. Because guess what? You have to fight your own demons and worry about what the fuck you got going on. What I'm doing should be the last thing on your mind. Heavy. But see, a lot of times as people, we judge people because it makes us feel better about what we do, what we had going on, our situations, the coke we done snorted, Heavy. the the, orga the orgies we done been in, the abortions we've had, the niggas we've laid with, the children we don't take care of. But it's just like now you would look at me and say, oh, that's, that's against God's will. But it's like, okay, well, what about those six abortions you had? Heavy. So it's crazy you said that, right? Before I go into the next question, so I had an interview with a, uh, a preacher yesterday, literally, right? I'm a, I'm a Christian. Um, mm -hmm. I love Christ. But it is like, like all of us, I'll be having my questions. And I mm -hmm. was saying, like, you know, I'm a straight heterosexual man. Uh -huh. You feel me? Like, nothing gay about me, but I can sit in a room and I can have a conversation with a gay guy, and it doesn't make me uncomfortable. Yeah. It don't make me feel uncomfortable. But the thing about uh, Christian, Christianity sometimes, is it confuses me because sometimes they'll preach about being gay, not being of the Lord, but then they'll say, like, God loves everybody. Do, do you ever, like, uh, what is your, re re are you religious at all? I'm religious. Mm -hmm. um, love God. Mm -hmm. Was raised in the church. Okay. Um, was brought up in the church. And I love Jesus. Like, I love, like, the energy. Because, you know, God is like an energy. A spir He's yes. like a spiritual being. He's in the atmosphere. Like, I love that person. But as far as the church... As far as a lot of the, the things church. that go on in the church, mm. uh, the people of the church, a lot of that shit is fake as fuck. Mm. Um, it's a business. I'll mm. tell anybody that. I don't care. I've talked about it publicly before on live, but it's a conversation that you really can't, you have to have that conversation with an open-minded person mm. because people who have, this has been embedded in them, <laughs> it, it, it's really no having a conversation with them about that. But my beliefs and the way that I think a lot of this shit is, brainwashed um a lot of it was taught down from generations so they don't know uh, no other way but how i see it is god created me he made me who i am he gave me these emotions he gave me this way of thinking so he loves me so at what age did you first know you was gay because i was like seven all right so and then at what age did you start thinking like yo god gave me this because you was brought up in the church you was never like uncomfortable in the church what, you, when did it snap you know and you so learned you know what's so crazy? Since I've been like 12, mm. I, these, I ask my mother certain things like, well, if God this, then why this? I all, oh, I wish Lisa was sitting right here. I, Cause she would be my witness and tell you, I always been like that. Since I was 11 or 12 and say, well, if God is real, then why is five million kids in that country starving and don't got no food? Well, if God is real, then why would he make this person like that and didn't want to send them? I always was a very curious person. Mm -hmm. So then when I started getting older and I started going to church and then really expanding my way of thinking, and I'm like, oh, the first lady is a nasty bitch. Mm -hmm. That hoe ain't got no God in her. That is fake. Girl, you just playing your position as a first lady to get your check with your family. But you was a nasty bitch. God could never be using you to spread love to nobody when you don't even have love in yourself. And, and, and once I started getting to about 17, 18, and then I had went to this church one day, and the preacher, he literally changed his whole message and directed it to me and my friend. Because wow. he could clearly see that we was gay when we walked in the building. Mm -hmm. And he directed his whole message to us about homosexuality. He wasn't saying our name, but he was directly talking to us. So I had went to the barbershop the next day. And they was in the barbershop talking, and I was talking to my barber. And I said, yeah, we had went to church yesterday, and um, what is the pastor name? Because he is from my city, and I would love to post it. Um, what is his name? I can't really remember his name. But I said, pastor such and such from such and such church 
had directed his whole message to us about homosexuality. He just was really trying to read us, go in on us. And he said, the pastor that been, had been cheating on his wife? He said, I think that's the pastor that be cheating on his wife. So he asked the other man that was sitting right next to him, cutting hair, and he was like, is that the pastor? And he was like, yes. Remember, they posted his picture on Facebook with the girl. They had caught them out somewhere. And he was with somebody who wasn't his wife. And then the lady, the, the lady across, because she was a barber too, she was across from us. And she was like, yeah, I mm. remember that preacher had cheated. So, bitch, fuck you and your, how you going to sit up there and try to preach to me about homosexuality, which a lot of Christians do. They pick and choose what they want to abide by the book by. It's, they all, they're good for that shit. That's one of the things they're good for. And then you just disregard the fact that you're not even faithful to your fucking wife. You put your family at jeopardy, but then you worry about who the fuck I'm laying down with. So a lot of that shit, I don't really be going for. I live by being a good person, mm -hmm. being a genuine person, being a loyal person, being right, doing right, and living my motherfucking life. That's what I go by. That's what God want me to do. So it was in, it was in that moment when you knew that it was like, all right, this shit is just bullshit. Yes. Yes, mm -hmm. it's in, and don't get me wrong, I like to go to work. I like to go to church because it's the energy in the room too. It's not even too much about the people. A lot of times it's the energy because I do know good energy and it's a lot of pastors out there who have good energy, they have a good message. But when you dig deeper as to far as to say like, am I so embedded in the church and am I like super religious? I'm not. Mm -hmm. Okay, okay. Don't forget to give us some fingers. I'm a, this is candid, so we're gonna talk. Uh-huh. Like, yeah, I just, my God. I'm just <laughs> okay, like, you know, director. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, just, you can go over there too, bro. Um, but uh, I was saying, you we was on the phone, right? And I was asking you, uh, I was talking to you, and you were saying you were you referenced yourself as girl. <laughs> so talk to me about that, because I, like, I, like I've heard gay guys say, you know, I might be gay, but I'm still a guy, I'm still a man. But you were referencing yourself as girl. So you and you know what's so crazy? When I said that on the phone, it threw you for a loop. I could no, no, I didn't. It, it ain't throw me in for a loop. It ain't. It did. Nah, cause like, at the at, at, to be honest, I know what I'm getting myself into. So <laughs> you could have been like, like shit. You, I was prepared to even say, yo, I'm not like whatever. You feel me? Uh. But I say that with all due respect because I was prepared to. Whatever, you know what I'm saying? Because like God, I wasn't, you such I didn't a judge mature, you. You, know you and you such a mature guy. But and you already know how it go. A nigga get around you and think you look good and be trying to shoot their shots. So you just let it know from the jump. I'm very cool with y'all, but I'm not gay. Yeah, God, I'm gonna God. talk about that too. I'm, I, it's on the list. I was gonna talk about that too. Got it. But you. So before I get to that, you you watch yourself as a girl, but. So do, do is that something you do all the time? No, I was or? playing. Okay. Yeah, I reference myself as a man. Okay. But it's like if somebody is talking to me, if I'm talking to a friend. And they be like, girl, I don't get offended. Okay. If I'm talking to my sister and she done slipped up and said it like, girl, like, because you know, a lot of times women think they're in the state of talking to their homegirl. So she's been like, oh, girl. She, my girlfriend have done that to me, but I check her. Like, yeah. And see, you know, she be like, yeah, because bitch, who, what? Yeah. So me, <laughs> oh, yeah, I wouldn't God. do that. It would, I would just keep having a conversation like she didn't even say it. Because okay. I know sometimes it's in the context of how they talking to their girlfriends. Like, okay. bitch, you know, that, you know what I'm saying? Okay. So, yeah. So, Having said that, right, mm -hmm. you, you had a message that I thought was super powerful. Um, you feel like uh, some gay guys try to take the, the role of a woman. Oh, get this part. And you were saying that that's not like, that's, that's like, that's out of their league. Like, that's, that's, mm -hmm. that's, 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 you shouldn't do that. Oh, so I had somebody reach out when I did that video, right? Mm -hmm. Because I do get a lot of LGBT love because that's my community, mm. which I love, right? And they try to come in my DM, which I really don't play because I'm the type of person, even when it comes down to my friends, and I have some friends that are very wise. One of them is sitting right there. Mm -hmm. Very wise, he's not stupid by a long shot. He know exactly who he be talking about, but I just don't really do opinions too well. I have to work on that. Okay. I can tell that's the, I'm very mature, but when it comes down to that area, because I know anybody who is wise, if they were sitting in front of me, they say that's the only way you learn and grow. It's like, you have to take, Opinions, I don't really do opinions too well. I don't really like people's opinion. Like, you could just save, I don't really want to hear it. But the person slid in my DM and they said, oh, well, I don't really agree with that because women have gotten their gay lingo from men, right? The gay mm. community. Okay. And so my response to that is, I still stand on what the fuck I said. And I'm not dumb to the fact of women have gotten their lingo from gay men. I get that. I get it because we have our own way of moving. We have our own way of thinking. I understand that. I understand as well. A lot of times women use gay men as can't, like eye candy, like 
kind of like an accessory. Like you kind of like that bitch when you have a gay friend I, I or mean, a gay homeboy. Let's, let's, let's keep it real though, not to cut you off. Uh -huh. Niggas do it too. Down. I've had a lot of my friends say, yo, nah, like get you a gay friend because they get bitches. They uh -huh. got bitches around. Yeah. Niggas like, niggas where they, niggas yes. have gay friends and straight men have gay friends uh -huh. as an accessory as well because Absolutely. they know what comes with it. Absolutely. They're going to attract women. But see, this is my thing. Ultimately, even down to the lingo. I get the lingo part, but when you really dissect it for me, when you really dissect it and take it back, you as a gay person in the community, you kind of created that lingo because it all originated from a woman. Mm. And they have a tough time understanding that because they feel like we already fighting enough adversities. We already fighting enough uh, situations when it comes to straight people, but it is the truth. A lot of gay men emulate women. So who did you look up to? Who did you aspire to be? Who raised you? Who you was in the household with? If you look at a lot of gay men, even the ones who are even a little bit more masculine, you say, oh, you act just like your mama. Mm -hmm. You act just like your mother, who is a woman. So you're emulating a woman. So when it all comes down to it, a lot of gay men get the game confused. A woman raised you, so you are emulating a woman, so you think you in competition with something that created you. It's, 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 it's a roach out there in the world, and I'm not going to say his name because he's literally a roach. He's nobody. But he thinks for some reason that he could be in competition with me acting like me. No, hey, hey, wait, wait, wait. Well, that's what I tell everybody when they come on. When they come on, no, no, no. When they come on, hey, when niggas come on my platform, I tell them all the time. Don't not say nobody's name. No. Cause if you go, cause if you go, cause if you go, if you go to no. if you go to the Breakfast Club and you go to Adam 22 and you go to all these lit ass podcasts, you're gonna say that name. Who you talking no, about? No, even if Who's I talking went, about? if I went to Breakfast Club, I wouldn't dare say that whole name. If I, I I put that on my mama, he he don't even get mentioned. But I'm pretty but sure your to, fans know who I he have is. to use him as an they don't know who he is either. I have to use him as an example. It's only a small community of locals who know who so he is. So show me the Instagram. Sorry. But I have to use him as an example. Show me the Instagram. I'm going to show you after. <laughs> I have to use him as an example. I have to use him as an example because I say that to say it's going back to the conversation with gay males and women. Mm. You can't beat something that you're emulating. Okay. You can't. It's impossible. How do you think you're going to be in competition with me when you are acting like me? You can't beat something that you're emulating. So when I make that video, I stand on it. Mm -hmm. You, how are you trying to compete with a woman when a woman is what you're emulating? A woman is what raised you. A woman is what taught you. A woman is the reason you acting the way that you're acting because you act just like your mama. So, so how you think you're going to go out there and work? And I love trans women. Love them down. They're beautiful. I fight for them. I stand in the line for them. I don't think they should be murdered. That's, that's foul. But you, how, how do you think that you're in competition with a cisgender woman? Mm. When you're what they're emulating, you're emulating them. You are aspiring to be a woman. So how do you think that you could beat a woman at a race that you're trying to join mm -hmm. when they already in the race? So that's really how I feel. Some people won't agree, but I really don't give a fuck. But you're basically saying just put respect on a woman. Like that's no. all you saying. Like you ain't saying I'm crazy. I don't think. All right. So you um we talk about like this uh influence mm -hmm. of gay men that, that the gay men have on women, mm -hmm. right? And the first thing um, that came to my mind was uh, it's somebody from D.C. His name is Roland Ray. Uh-huh. Uh, you know who Roland Ray is? Yes, I know who Roland Ray is. What, like, when I say Roland Ray and that name, what, what comes to your mind? Like, what, what do you think? Roland Ray, when, what, what comes to mind is funny. Mm. Um, what comes to mind is troll. What comes to mind is kind of a trendsetter. I was about to say, influential got to be one, right? Down. Cause like he, 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 I think he created the, uh, he created the like, not that girl, am I wrong? And it's so crazy because now mind you, not too much of a follower of Roland Ray. Now will be a fake hoe to sit up here and say, I don't know who that is. I know exactly who that is. I know he's very, he's very much a trendsetter. Mm. Down. They still his nigga all the time. But I was literally looking at Moneybag, yo, video that he posted the other day. And anybody with common sense, Moneybag got that slogan from Roller Ray. Mm. And I didn't even look, and I literally caught the Holy Ghost jump out of my seat. I was on Moneybag page, because I love Moneybag. Seeing he posted a video, and he was like, he said so, literally exactly what Roller Ray said. Yeah, I think Roller Ray posted it. And that. then I happened to look at the blog, they posted it, then I went on Roller Ray page. I said, oh my God, I don't even follow Roland Ray like that. But I literally looked on Moneybag video and I said, Roland Ray says that. Mm -hmm. Like he literally took his whole little phrase yeah. and he put it in his song. 
No, Literally. I, I had to ask you that because just because he's from the he from the DMV or whatever. I'm from the DMV. Well, I'm from Baltimore, you know, in my city. We don't really it's different. It's uh -huh. weird. You know what I'm saying? I'm from Baltimore, but it's you would recognize it as DMV. And then money bags <laughs> the fits, right? To be devil's advocate, money bag probably would say, Well, I heard a bitch say it. Right? Okay. But they got that from Roland Ray. And that's what I mean. They do take our logo. They do take our slings. They do take our words. I get that part. I get it because when I heard that part of the song, I said, oh my goodness, I know Roland Ray says that. Right. And he used that. I'm like, wow, that's crazy. They be intact in the culture and they know exactly what the fuck going on. Yo, do you, Um, I want to ask you this. Well, first of all, do you feel like uh that happens a lot in, in your community? Like people, straight guys, they got so much problems with gay guys, but they taking their language and they not and they not paying the respect to it. Down. The language, the style. And I remember somebody broke that down a while ago. Like, it's so crazy when it comes to straight men. They go crazy about these designers and these outfits that are gay men brands. Mm. And like, it's the top tier shit. They go crazy about this shit. Crazy about this shit. And this shit is originated from gay men. Mm. You know what I'm saying? So it's just... They do get a lot from our culture, for sure. I want to ask you this question. Mm -hmm. um, I remember I was, I was working at T-Mobile, this was a while ago, mm -hmm. and I remember uh, I was telling my coworker he was gay, and I was saying, yo, I'm cool with gay people, just don't bring that shit around me, mm -hmm. right? And I feel like this is, is a statement that a lot of men say, uh -huh. right? And he told me, he was like, well, what if I told you that? Is that fair? And he made me think. He was like, and I'm like, what you mean? He like, so you in here at work, you talk about girls all the time. You know that's not my preference. That could be, that could make me uncomfortable. Mm. But you put a stipulation on me because I don't like the same thing you like. Who the fuck this nigga look like? Who, me? Yes. Nigga, Who? I'm talking a story. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. <laughs> oh, that was off track. I am so sorry. Who I look like? Who I look like? The rapper Tootsie? You ain't never heard that? I never heard that. You look just like Tootsie. I'm sorry. Well, never heard ahead. that. I never heard that one. Go ahead. But do you find do you find that being like um, I don't know, not fair? Sometimes do you feel like sometimes men are inconsiderate to your feelings because your preferences in women. So when they talk about women around you, it's like yo, if you talk about women around me, I should be able to talk about men around. Like, do you find that uncomfortable? <laughs> I am. I think it's a Gemini in me, and I can tell you too, you very mature, man, mm -hmm. and you're going to go far. I can tell because even your dialogue of, I guess, I, I would say this, you're like a journalist too. Because mm. when you get bigger and bigger, you're going to be a journalist. Like, yeah, you sure. get both sides of the spectrum. Not like, Charlamagne sure. the God is a journalist. Angela Lee is a, journal, a journalist. And you have to be, like, non-biased. And I can tell that that is you for sure. 100%. So, I think, like, the Gemini in me, I get that a lot of this shit is new. Mm. A lot of it is different. We was raised a certain way. We was brought up a certain way. So it's weird sometimes. You still getting in tech. Like I understand the dynamic also of a mother being heartbroken that her son wants to turn into a woman. Mm. I get it. I get it. Now, I'm not saying that it's right to kick your child out. No, I don't believe in none of that shit. None of it. But I get the spectrum of it's different. We wasn't brought up that way. We was brought up a certain type of way. So a lot of this stuff is new. A lot of it is you still trying to get adapted to it. So. And a lot of people mind is totally different from a nigga talk about a woman, which is supposed to be normalized, opposed to a gay man talking about a man that is something that is different and weird. So I get both sides of the spectrum, but it's a double standard. It's definitely a double standard. And I get the fact of I'm going to talk about what the fuck I want to talk about around whoever the fuck I want to talk about it with. Right. Period. That's me. So we can't, yo, we can't ignore the, um, the society we're in, right? Mm -hmm. A lot of people getting canceled by saying shit. And I was, I was like, y'all want to talk to somebody gay about this. Because I wonder how you feel, like, hypothetically. Mm -hmm. If I'm talking to a straight man and he does something, I don't know, different. Let's just say different in respect to the LGBT community, right? And I'm like, yo, that's gay. Does that offend you? Me? No. All right, so why, do, if, and it's because you're different, but it does offend so many people in the LGBT community. Why? And I think... The reason why it offends people is because when you say it in the context of saying that's gay, it's like, okay, well, what's wrong with being gay? Mm -hmm. So when you put it in the context of saying that's gay, you're putting it in the context of saying it's something wrong with being gay because now you're trying to isolate or you're trying to alienize something he did as the equal in the two that's gay. And you already know the structure of how people feel about gays. You already know the structure of how people feel about the LGBT community. So it's kind of like when you say that's gay, you, you putting it in the context of, no, 
That's that's weird. That's that's different. That's wrong. But I would say playing that was no, nah, not even playing that was advocate. I'm gonna be honest. Just how I grew up. I'm gonna mm-hmm. be straight up, right? Hope I don't get canceled, but I'm gonna just be real. Um, I do feel like you know, uh, growing up in the communities that we grew up in, you say you Savannah, right? Baltimore, like we not we not taught these things, right? I so know. even before we get to gay, we were talk we was calling people retarded. That's not nice. At you all. know what I'm saying? But we don't see people getting canceled for that. Mm-hmm. We was calling people uh, all type of things. You feel me? So mm-hmm. imagine I'm making fun of somebody that has a, I'm making fun of somebody saying they have, they are retarded when being retarded is literally a mental illness. That's not right. right. We don't see, I'm sorry, we don't see people getting canceled for that, but we see people getting canceled for calling people gay. I just, I feel like it's, <laughs> I don't want to say bigger problems, but I feel like almost there are other problems in the world that we could, or I and it's not personal. So it's like if you're not going to take it personal when we call somebody retarded, why are you taking it personal when we call somebody gay? I, I don't know. Help me out. I, I think fuck. that we've come a long way, but when it comes to gays, they try to make us instinct. Mm-hmm. I hope I'm using the correct word okay. of what dinosaurs are. Okay. But so when you're dealing with a community that is at the bottom or what is supposed to be at the bottom of the food chain, mm. you have to be careful in the context of how you use certain words. Mm. When you're dealing with a group of people who are alienized, you have to be careful with using certain words. It's kind of like saying to a girl that is dark skinned, oh, you so pretty to be a dark skinned girl. That's true. You did not mean it like that. You did not mean it in the concept of trying to offend her, but you have to be sensitive when it comes to that because you already know the obstacles they fight and you already know the, the, the things they're coming against. You already know the situations that they have to go through every day because it's not normalized and they're at the bottom of the food chain. So when you say certain things like oh that's gay or oh that's homo it's kind of like dangerous Mm. because now you're only adding on to what if that man was like down low or bisexual in the inside and he never shared it because of reason of feeling like oh they're gonna isolate me oh they're gonna alienize me and then you say something on the context of oh that's gay making Mm. it seem like oh what the fuck you doing that for it's only gonna play with him even more to say let me keep this shit to myself that is so Yo, it's so much to talk about. Uh, Jazz, my assistant, y'all. Keep agenda. Keep that just in case I forget. Yo, so we talking about they're going to isolate me, right? Mm-hmm. So it's weird because you made it make sense. She was like, yo, you somebody could be down low because of a reason behind mm-hmm. it, right? And I'm thinking the first thing that caught in my mind is like, if you down low, you should be exposed because I feel like I respect gay men that's out in the open about it because you confident about yours. But then now that I think about it, somebody could be down low because they're scared. And I shouldn't judge that Ooh, man because he's scared. Conversation. But it's like, damn, because I'm thinking like, honestly, as a man, I'm like, yo, like, I don't respect no nigga that's down low because only your shit. If you gay, you gay, but it ain't that easy. It ain't. And it be, it's two sides to the spectrum, too, because I tell people all the time, it's so crazy that you ask some good shit. Because I tell guys all the time, I'm like, I was even talking to this dude that wanted to be a rapper, mm-hmm. right? And he's like, mm, I guess I'm gonna be like a down low rapper. Mm. But I'm like, even though we come from the communities of gay people being isolated, especially in the black community, a lot of times motherfuckers respect that shit. I'm t- I know how it go. I know I'm telling you, like, even though it is an uphill battle, I know it's not easy, but. They respect that shit because it takes a lot to stand in your truth. It takes a lot to be who you are. It takes a lot to be brave and walk in your truth. But I think it's just the way we was raised. Mm. The church, it embedded into a lot of black men, embedded into a lot of homes and a lot of people that it is wrong to be who you are. So a lot of times we hide it. And that, those are the things that we teach our children. So it's kind of just like an ongoing thing, an ongoing generational curse because that is what was taught to us. But it's really just two sides of the spectrum because just like you said, a lot of times down low and being a snitch in the black community is like neck and neck. Yeah. If a nigga is exposed to being gay and he done had a whole motherfucking family or he's exposed to being a snitch, nobody looks same. at you the same. Yeah, right. At all. Right. Because a lot of times people do, they will respect you better standing in your truth. Yeah, it might be a little harder to be a full a full blown gay man in a in a community that don't really fuck with that shit but ultimately underneath i done met so many street niggas like man i man i respect you man you don't really give a fuck with nobody thinking that i i I respect that shit the women love them 
<laughs> love them. I don't know what it is about girls. I think it's because we emulate them. I don't know what it is about girls and gay men. They live for a confident bitch. Sometimes they be intimidated. I ain't even gonna lie, they do because it, it be a lot for them sometimes. But a lot of times they respect that shit top tier. They love, they love a confident bitch because it takes a lot to be who you are and stand in your truth. You know what so, I'm saying? I want to ask you this, man. I don't even need you for it. But um, do you feel like, um, cause I, I don't know where I'm at with this, honestly. Do you feel like it's a gay agenda on the uh, on our country? Like, do you feel like? Cause I hear I hear this a lot. Everybody say like they're trying to uh, de uh our men. Oh, you! This man is asking some real shit. No, that's you don't think opinion. so? No, because I feel like, and my friend shaking his head saying, "Yes, I don't agree." That's my opinion. Mm -hmm. I don't agree, and the reason I don't agree is because as a young boy, I had two straight parents. I seen them kiss. I seen them be in love. I seen them hold hands, and that did not make me want a woman at all. I've never been with a woman. I don't desire for one second of the day mm -hmm. to be with a woman. So. I'm going to ultimately have my own mind. So don't think just because you see something on the TV screen of two men kissing that your son is going to automatically be gay. If you're not raising him in that aspect of being gay and you raising him as a straight man, then your parenting and what the fuck you got going on with your son, that should be enough. They've been pushing the straight agenda for years. Since I was a little boy, all I've seen was straight people. All I've seen was straight couples. So I guess a lot of times it's kind of like shaking an envelope. Mm. I live for it. Everybody is entitled to their own opinion, which I respect. I get it because I'm a non-biased person, or at least I try to be that way. But I think I love the fact that they shake the envelope. I love the fact that the street niggas know who Lil Nas is. The street niggas know who Santana is. As much as they may not want to admit it, they know what the fuck going on. They see it, and it's because these labels and these companies is like, push that shit in their motherfucking face. They've been pushing this shit long enough and make them eat it. And that's how I see it. Like, it's, it's so many gay men out there. It's so many young gay men that are looking for that ideal person that they can see themselves in. Mm. I remember being a little boy. I didn't too much see a lot of black gay men represented. Even in the Latino community, I don't see a lot of Latino people being represented and they doing better at that as well. So I think a lot of times people feel like it's an agenda because they're putting it in our faces. Mm. But I think it's just, they're doing more so now of just showing like, with the reality of the situation is no on the commercials no it's not just a mother and father at home it's couples out there that are husband and husband it's people out there who have wives and wives so i think they're just doing a a a, 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 a situation of putting it in people face to see what it really so is. honestly we could say they're trying to normalize it but a lot of times uh people look at trying to normalize gay as a bad thing when like you said they were normalizing men straight from the beginning of the time Absolutely. Um, what I will say is I think um, we do need more straight men to stand up for gay men, right? And it might sound weird to my homies probably looking at me like, this nigga's gay. But, I mean, you feel me? I, I say that because when I was coming up, my mom used to always say, if you were gay, I would love you the same, but you're not going to stay in my house. She said that. So, as a straight man, I came up saying like, yo, nah, I don't have no problem with gay men. And if my son was gay, I would love him, but he couldn't stay in my house. Cause that's what I, that generation of curse, right? I'm not gonna lie. I watched a, a podcast, I Am Athlete, with uh, um, Dwayne Wade, and he was saying how he embraced his son being gay and why he embraced him being gay. And I was like, damn, imagine being a child and your parents not loving you the same because you different. And I'll never forget, I'm like, at that moment, I thought to myself, like, yo, that's special. And if he changed my perspective on it, and I'm like, yo, if I have a child and he turns out gay, I'm going to love him the same. He can stay with me, all that. You feel me? Mm -hmm. So I do believe that if we get more influential straight men, like, I don't know, like, talking about it, speaking about it, being comfortable in their own mm -hmm. skin, it would open it up. Yes, for it would. That is fact. Yeah. That is fact. And that's why even when it comes down to Boosie, mm -hmm. like, again, I'm from Savannah. They love Boosie in Savannah. Nigga, I'm from Baltimore. He's our godfather. I swear to God. They it's weird. Love He's our Bootsy in Savannah. And I know for a fact Bootsy is not homophobic. Yeah. I know Bootsy's not homophobic. But the things that he say is so dangerous because it's like we need a nigga that's gonna be like, man, that 
shit don't, it ain't got shit to do with me. And, and, and real niggas respect that shit. That, that don't have nothing to do with me as long as you not doing it to me, as long as you not making me feel in some way. What you got going on has nothing to do with me. So it is very important. It is. But, and that shit would change a lot but, because niggas is followers. Niggas yeah. is fo That's all they People do is in general. Yeah, yeah. People in general, but mainly niggas too. They are followers, so they're gonna follow. If they homeboy got an issue with it, even if they don't have an issue with it, they follow him. They don't give a fuck. It, it, it don't, it's just in their blood. It's, it's, it's bad. Niggas Boosie, is followers. Don't kill me for this if you see this. But it's, it's almost fair to say that like what Boosie, cause when you say what he says is dangerous, it's almost fair to say that what Boosie doing and what the gay community doing is one of the same as far as pushing the envelope, right? Uh -huh. Like gay people, what they do is dangerous every day. You put your life on the line at risk every day. Uh huh. Boosie being so in tune with himself, not giving a fuck what nobody think, is dangerous. You know what I'm saying? Like uh -huh. everybody can't do that. You get on media, so many people are scared to say how they really feel. Yes, that's true. Boosie ain't one of them. That's true. You feel me? Same me either. With, right, but I, that's why I say that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but um, yo, I definitely uh, I enjoyed the conversation. Uh, I want to say thank you for pulling up, bro. Uh. What, what what you got going on? I see you dropping a lot of merch and shit. You get into the bag, like so. Um, I'm actually I got oh I got so much stuff going on. I got an accessory collection dropping. I'm gonna be on Lifetime coming up. Oof, um, heavy. I got so many bookings coming up. I'm gonna also be doing a mentorship for small business owners who are trying to get their company out there because I understand the hustle and being an entrepreneur and trying to get your business out there and hustling and not having money to do advertisement and promotion. So I'm going to be also doing a mentorship coming up 2022, teaching people how I made $100,000 in one year mm -hmm. with my hair company. I don't have a liquid cash, but I generated it. And that was literally in one year of my business. I have the proof. I have the proof like on paper. Oh, to be exact, over 140,000. To be exact, how I generated that in one year, teaching them about content, teaching them about marketing, teaching them about putting a brand out there consistently every single day. You have to put your brand out there every single day. Flex, get this part. Cause this part of my post for my mentorship. <laughs> um, Cause I know marketing. Hey, hey, I but, listen, I told you I'm telling you, listen, I'm taking notes. Yeah, but a lot of times, even with you, like what you got on your hands is good as fuck. Did, you sure. got something good on your hands, you not biased, you good at what you do, you remember all your motherfucking questions off the dome, that shit, you good at what you do. Thank it's you. about that content. You could be good all day at what you got going on and nobody will give a fuck. <laughs> facts. No, no, I'm serious, no, nobody facts. will give a fuck. They ain't clicking your video, they ain't looking at your shit, they not gonna watch you, cause it's boring. Not mm. you, but I'm just saying in general, you have to put your heart and soul into your content. You have to make content that people want to see, but you have to be hungry for it. To be able to say, I'm gonna wake up in the morning and I'm putting my work into my motherfucking content. Content is everything. You sit up there and post a motherfucking video that's not intriguing to people, they're gonna keep scrolling. They're they not interested in your bundles, they're not interested in your lashes, they're not interested in your course. It's about that content. You have to continue to put out good content. And I think that is where so many business owners in Atlanta, because when I posted my numbers and I showed them how I made over $140,000 in one year of me just launching my business, so many people reached out and said, how the fuck you did that? What the fuck? I know you got a platform, but how in the fuck was you able to do that content? Mm -hmm. Every single day I was working on my content. Every single day I was traveling all the way out to where my sister lived because we was business partners and I was working on my content, doing my videos, having her record me on the floor with the hair, not going out, putting it into my content. People want to see your product. I, I meet so many people that say they have a business and they haven't posted in seven days. How? How? How do you expect to get orders? How do you expect people to see your podcast? How do you expect people to see your blog, your business, your lashes, your hair, see you're a singer, see you're a dancer if you haven't posted in nine days? That's and you fact. can't get caught up on the views. You can't because everything is a buildup. I wasn't always getting 100,000 views and I have to tell people that all the time. I remember when I was getting 1,000 views, 2,000 views, and some days I get 10,000, some days I get 250,000. It's the algorithm, but you have to continue to put your content out there and be serious about your content of what you're doing and recycle. Just like I told you, you got heavy hitters you know the interviews with. Heavy hitters, people who are known, people who have followers, repost that shit on your page to let them know I've been doing this shit. I've been working. You know what I'm saying? So, 
Nah, I'm gonna teach people the game. Hey, you listen, bro. I appreciate it for the people that don't know. I'm pretty sure everybody know this shit. But all right, let the niggas, you know, the, the YouTube shit. Let niggas know where to follow you at, how to support yes. you, all that. Also. Um, you can find me on Instagram at Big Sexy Official. <laughs> My Facebook is Bryant B. I appreciate y'all. This is a dope interview. I'm coming back. I'm bringing people. We finna be locked in. Thanks, dog. Appreciate it. Period. Right. Jay Hill, conversation series. We out. It's a wrap.